The Brady Bunch is an American sitcom created by Sherwood Schwartz that aired from 1969 to 1974 on ABC. It's the story of a man named Brady, an architect widow with three sons, the oldest Greg, middle son Peter, and youngest Bobby. He meets and marries Carol with three daughters of her own, oldest Marcia, middle girl Jan, and little one Cindy. Living with them is a friendly maiden named Alice. They all live in a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house in the Los Angeles suburbs. The episodes deal with important life issues as such as boy problems, sharing bathrooms, battles over a clubhouse, family camping, and missing dolls and kazoos. An episode that typewriter collectors would will appreciate is called Lost Locket, Found Locket, which aired on March 20th, 1970. Jan receives a locket in the mail from an unknown admirer, and all the Bradys are curious about who sent it. One clue is that the letter Y on the address label sits lower than the other letters. The Bradys spend the episode trying to figure out who sent the locket. Carol and Alice sneak in Mike's office to test his typewriter, but no luck since it didn't have a dropped Y. Back home, Mike is in the den with Greg doing some snooping of his own. He is using Carol's portable typewriter to see if she might have typed the address label. No dropped Y. The mystery deepens. Finally, at the end of the episode, Alice tells Jan that she wants to share a secret with her. Alice brings out her old portable typewriter out of her closet and lets Jan type on it. Bingo! There's a dropped Y. So Alice sent the locket to Jan. But why? Alice explains that she was also a middle sister and sometimes felt like she didn't get the attention that her oldest and youngest sisters got. She wanted Jan to feel special. Lost locket, found locket. We at Typewriter Minutes have been wondering, are there any typewriters out there that exude the 1970s and the Brady Lynch vibe? This is Eli from Typewriter Minutes and today we're doing a review of a 1976 Sears Achiever. So we've done several brother reviews. I think this is the first review you've done of a brother JP7. So it's a little bit bigger than like a brother Charger 11 or a Webster XL500. This one here has a wide carriage, 12 inch carriage, and it's got a plastic body. So it uh, just looks a little bit different than your typical smaller brother. The keys kind of look the same, but it has a few other features that you don't see on most of the smaller JP1s. And uh, we'll show you those here right now. So as I mentioned, the first thing to note is that it's got plastic body, plastic ribbon cover, and as I'll show you in a few minutes, has a plastic carrying case. So I guess the upside of having a plastic body is that as long as it doesn't crack, they pretty much look like they did when they left the factory. Sometimes the plastic can yellow with time. This one, I can't tell if it's yellowed or not because it's kind of a cream and brown color. So if it did yellow, it looks good anyway, just as is. Um, so that's really the only downside to plastic. I guess if you don't like the, the look and feel of plastic, this typewriter is not for you. But the upside is they look good as long as they haven't been dropped or cracked. And again, the only downside is just the, if you're a metal body typewriter guy or gal, then this machine is not for you. It does creak a little bit because the plastic flexes when you pick it up. But otherwise, it's a really solid machine, notwithstanding the plastic housing around it. So uh, one thing to note, it's got the cool repeat well, it's on carriage lock. Here's the carriage lock over on this side. Uh, they've moved it on the smaller brother JP1 that's on the other side. Here on this JP7, it's on the left side. So you got to pull it up to start typing. And then it's got the repeat, cool repeat spacer, which kids just love. Some parents love it too. It's got um, typical backspace, has a Unlike some typewriters that have a mushy backspace, this one has a nice, really nice feel to it. Uh, it's got the typical ribbon color selector, black, red, and stencil. 
it does have a full-fledged tabulator. Some smaller brother typewriters like the Webster XL500 have preset tabs where it tabs over every 10 spaces. This one, you can manually set and clear the tabs with this lever over here. So right now, this is gonna be a little bit wobbly because it's on my Lazy Susan, but right now it's set every 10 spaces. So this works kind of like a Smith Corona uh, key set tabulator. If you want to clear individual tab stops, you just tab over, clear, and clear them one at a time. So now all your tabs are cleared out. And to set them, you do the same thing, only you hit the S for set. So we'll go and we'll do them every 10 spaces. Set. Okay, that's good. So now tabs are set every 10 spaces. And you can set a lot of tabs because it does have a wide carriage, which is kind of nice. It allows you to type either in landscape or portrait mode. So you can do eight and a half uh, paper sideways on this machine. So we'll uh, come around to the side here. The knob looks like just about every other brother typewriter knob you'll ever see. Single carriage release lever on the right hand side right here. Here's your little paper release lever. So if you put the paper in, crooked and you need to scooch it that's what that guy is for or when you're ready to take the paper out don't rip it out Angela Lansbury style just roll it out or lift the paper release lever over here uh, okay this is metal so I did say it's all plastic but it actually has metal carriage end caps and a metal back plate up here but the bottom housing is plastic as well as the ribbon cover. We've got the standard brother push and slide margins, bulletproof design. This one does have a pop-up paper support. So it's kind of like a silver Seiko paper support where you if you can pull up come up here rely a little bit. This little guy right there. Just flip that and out it comes. So it's not a switchblade type like on a Webster where it just pops up. You just have to manually push it down and then pull it up. So that's your paper support. Uh, does not have a paper guide for the left hand side where you can slide it over here as far as where you want your the left hand of your paper to go in. So we just usually line it up at the zero. And I, if you'll come up to the top just a little bit, Eli, you'll see, of course, you've got the paper bale, and then here's your line spacing. you got single space and a half and double space, and then it has a, two ways to get rid of the clicks. You have the variable line spacing here, so if you push that button, the clicks go away, and you can go wherever you need to on a form. Same thing here, this little R position on the line space lever, if you click it all the way to R, also releases the clicks. This one retains the clicks or your line position when you come back. So if you type H2O and you need the two to go down or up, put it on R, and then when you're ready to type again, it remembers your line spacing. Uh, ribbon cover, on some ribbon covers, on um, brothers like this, they come up this way. This one actually, you have to lift up from the front. So I put the fingers up here and then lift up gently with your thumbs. And you can see it has the, not, not a post, but two little uh, horseshoe shaped plastic uh, parts here. And those fit down into the little, if, you'll, if you can get in there, Eli, and see that little, plastic post there so the, the post just goes into these little metal or plastic shafts when you're ready to put the cover back on so the thing about the brother jp7s they look and feel a little bit more like silver seiko's 
the keys are angled up just a touch. Uh, we've pointed that out on some other Silver Seikos like the Royal Mercury where the keys are just tilted up a little bit. And I don't know why it is, something about having the universal bar up here. Uh, I don't know if it just helps the design, but they angled the keys up just a touch, like on a Silver Seiko. Um, has the typical uh, ribbon retention thingamabobbers. It's got the ribbon reverse system here with the two little forks, just like you see on the smaller brothers. So you do have to have eyelets on the ribbon. When the ribbon gets all the way uh, off one spool, the eyelet comes out, triggers that fork, and starts going the other direction. So standard brother ribbon reverse system, very reliable, very bulletproof. Uh, one thing that was hiding under the ribbon cover right here is the touch control. So you don't see that on all brothers, some of the smaller brothers have it out here on the left side of the keyboard. But here on this GP7, it's hiding under the ribbon cover. And it actually does make a difference on this one. If you push down on a key when it's on the L position, easier touch. H is heavier touch. And you can see that spring right there that puts the tension on it. So I usually keep it right about in the middle. Uh, Okay, putting the ribbon cover back on, goes in just like that. And then the front piece just snaps into place. So that's the Brother Sears Achiever in a nutshell. I'll tilt it up so you can see the bottom of the machine. We did have this thing completely apart uh, for cleaning. It was pretty dirty when we got it. The old feet were crumbling. We replaced them with some nice, new, soft, white ones. But as you can see, the body's just in really great shape. It's never been dropped. So, plastic typewriters, uh, love them or hate them, they just, they're pretty durable, pretty reliable, as long as you don't drop them. Almost forgot one thing. On the smaller brother GP1s, if you're typing too fast and you get two type bars that are jammed up together like that, you can either flick them back with your finger or the margin release key acts as a de-jammer key. But not on this one. I guess on the GP7s they got rid of the de-jammer key. So, oh well. And now we'll look at the case. Okay, so I don't know what this type of plastic is called. It's a more flexible plastic that you see on a lot of cases from the 1970s and a lot of people really don't like them but I think they're probably the best case as far as protecting the typewriter as long as the uh, usually there's a just a plastic hinge and if that plastic hinge is shot then your case is kind of toast unless you can repair it but if that's in good shape even though these aren't the best looking cases they do a really good job of protect the protecting the machine. I've received several uh, brothers and cases like this, and they came in boxes that were not much larger than the case. And the typewriters didn't have a, uh, any damage to them at all. So the, just the form-fitting nature of these on the inside. So to open it up, it's got these little plastic locking levers. So open it up. And just the form-fitting plastic in here keeps the typewriter really snug once you have it closed. It's got this little piece of styrofoam right here. I'll go ahead and lift the typewriter up and put it in. It doesn't lock in there, it just, once you stand up your line, you can get it from the top view. It just sits in there like that. So you have to make sure the carriage is locked, which I did. That way it's centered. Push the handle down. And then that's it. This case keeps it in position when it's closed. You lock it and you're good to go. So, don't know the name of this plastic. The smaller Brother GP1s, like the Brother Charger 11s, have a hard plastic shell case. And those are often cracked when I get them because they just don't survive poor shipping very well. Uh, but these cases, even though they're kind of butt ugly, are really good for protecting the machine. 
So uh, that's it for the case. And now for the type test. Okay, we'll put the paper support up. And we're doing, I'm going to turn the paper sideways for this type test so I got the right margin over at 90. This table's not designed for typing on, it's more of a display. It's an old underwood crate and it's just a tad wobbly. But I'll do my best here. I'll do a couple lines on black. lock so margin release typewriters of just about any kind because they just don't skip they don't skip they don't bunch and as long as you can type without typos usually the results are pretty good so there's yeah a few typos and you can see that the typeface is nice and crisp and I like the typing feel on brothers this um, Feels a little bit different than the smaller brothers just because of the angle of the keys, but just a really solid machine, very reliable, no skipping, no bunching, and of course the full repeat spacer. We'll wrap up this review with some pros and cons. Okay, this 1976 Sears Achiever has standard brother reliability. It's easy to get apart for cleaning and maintenance. The there's just a few screws under here to get it off and the four feet screws on the bottom and you can take that thing apart in about two minutes. So it's pretty easy to get it out uh, for cleaning and maintenance. The wide carriage for landscape typing or if you're into arts and crafts and you like doing crafty things and you need the paper turned that way, that's a good thing. It's got the key set tabulator, which you don't see on all brothers, or very many brothers, at least the smaller brothers. It's kind of nice to have a key set instead of preset tabs. It has the repeat spacer, which, who doesn't love a repeat spacer? It's got touch control under the hood there, which actually makes a difference. Uh, the typing action, you know, I've on a lot of different typewriter uh, groups and some people don't like brother typewriters of the typing feel and I just don't get that because I think they're one of the better feeling typewriters but that's just a personal preference. Plastic body is another plus it looks like new hasn't been dropped so that's the that's the thing about plastic body typewriters sometimes uh, they're not taken care of and they're broken but this one is in really good shape. Uh, it's got the Brady Bunch color scheme. I mean, that you could tell it's made in the 70s. It's just got that classic 70s look. The form-fitting case protects the typewriter well. The, those black cases are ugly, but they really do a good job protecting the machine. It's got a little pop-up paper support, which we like. And it's got new rubber feet. I can't remember. I, I'd have to go back and look at the pictures, but I think we also put on a new rubber bumper under the space bar. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I've been working on too many machines lately. Okay, Eli, what are some of the cons? The plastic body is not for everybody. We like it, but some people like might like metal bodies. Yeah, I like but it, but not for everybody. The wide carriage makes it bigger and heavier, and it's not the quietest. So that kind of wraps up the review of our Sears. Achiever. Thank you for watching Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha!